this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you for joining me in this very special Mother's Day. And today I want to share with you the process of this painting of my wife and her cat. And also at the end, I'm going to share a few thoughts about Mother's Day and my wife as a housewife and a full-time mom. So if you've been following me for a while, you probably know that I like to paint my wife once in a while. So Mother's Day is more of an excuse for me to paint her again. Now originally I sought to paint her with one of our kids, but I didn't find a suitable photo for that. I did find this photo of her holding one of our cats, and I think that looks really cute, so I decided to paint this one instead. So line drawing first. It's very important to have a decent line drawing before you start painting, especially when you are doing a portrait. The proportion, the basic structure of the face, the alignment, it should be relatively believable. So I spend a little bit more time doing the drawing. The last thing you want to worry about when you are actually painting watercolor is to think about the drawing, to think about the placement and the size of the facial feature and so on. You want to be able to just focus on making the wash, the color, the values. So definitely spend a little bit more time on doing the drawing to get that part out of the way. So constantly checking my drawing, now it looks pretty good. So I start to take a kneaded eraser and clean up some of the line work. A lot of the lines were drawn when I was using a doll 4B pencil. So those are what I consider construction lines and those lines can be erased. Adjust the shoulder a little bit. And now we're ready to start to our first wash. Now, before I start to paint, I double check the drawing real quick. And I noticed that her right eyes needs a little bit of adjustment. Just to move it right ever so slightly. And now I'm ready to start. So the first wash is just to establish a very basic skin tone. The basic skin tone, I usually use cadmium orange with some cadmium red a little bit more towards the rest side and that tend to make the skin looks a little bit healthier a little bit more glowy because of the blood that underneath our skin things can get a little bit redder and now wet on to wet i paint the middle value for the skin tone the wash is almost dry it's just a little bit damp so when you do a little bit of wet on to wet on it, you will still get some soft shape. So now I'm just very carefully trying to establish the value, get the light side and the darker side, which is more of a middle value. Add a little bit of warm and cool tone to it just to make it look a little bit more interesting. Now I actually start to paint the hair and we'll connect that to her neck. And we'll start to expand the shape of her hair. Give it some different tones of warm and cool. Her hair tend to have this warmer glow when it is under light. So I want to put that in. The other side of her hair. Now this is the initial wash for the hair, so later on, we can put some darker tone on it. Right now it's more important to just have a clean wash, clean shape for the hair, and connect as much as you can. So you can already start to see the face has a very basic lighting. And before the wash on the hair is dry, I try to expand that shape out onto the face so that there is a connection between the hair and her forehead and her face. One thing that I try not to have is to have too much separation between the hair 
and the face and the features on the face. I want them to all belong together instead of all individual separate shapes. And now I'm starting to work on the eye. Now when I'm painting a darker part of the face, I try not to go too dark too fast. Instead, I just try to make the color a little bit more opaque instead of very transparent. And when doing that, you will get the value difference while still maintaining that clean look. So here's the right eye. So same thing, just more opaque, intense paint, but I'm still trying to keep it around the same skin tone. So something a little bit warmer and a little bit darker. Painting the eyebrow. Her eyebrow is really light. She doesn't seem to like it. She feels like her eyebrow is too light. She wants to make it a little bit darker. I liked it though. I think it looks very gentle on her. So we connect the eye socket down to her nose. Notice that I try to merge the shape together. So now I'm painting a middle value. I try to connect that shape together and I change the color within that shape. So I'm using a little bit of carmine to get that kind of blush looking color on her face. And I continue on. Now I'm painting the nostril, but I try to connect the nostril to philtrum and other part of the mouth. Try to make the nose just a little bit darker. With a little bit more contrast, the nose will pop out. And now I start to paint her lips. Each shape I paint, I try to have a hard edge and a soft edge. If you try to soften everything, the face will look like a mush and that's not going to look good. But if all the edges are hard edge, your face might look a little bit too harsh. Now, how you want to paint it is completely up to you. I just try to have a good balance between soft and hard edges. So a little bit of dark in some of the area, like the corner of the mouth, some part of the lips. And now it's time to darken the hair. Once you got that dark for the hair, you have a good reference how dark you should go for your portrait. Because before it's just light and middle value. But now we introduce dark value. The middle value now starting to look light. Continue to paint the shape of the hair. Connect that to the dark part of the neck. So now as we introduce the dark tone of the painting, it feels a lot more complete. But at the same time, hair is a very good opportunity to change and adjust the shape of the face. Now I'll just add a little bit more dark details here and there. Just some areas that's really necessary. Just because the mouse, the gap of the mouse is dark doesn't mean I paint it everywhere. Here I added a dimple. It's very important I add that dimple because whenever my wife smile, that dimple shows. So that's really her. Now the face is mostly done. I am starting to paint her hoodie. It's a gray hoodie, so the color isn't really that interesting. I try to add a little bit more color here and there, a little bit of warm and cool there. That being said, I also don't want to go too crazy to a point that is distracting. So I try to leave out the cat for now because the white part of her fur is pretty important. We need to keep that. I'll try to have a little bit of drip there just for fun. And now I am starting to get into the fur on the cat. 
specifically the yellowish fur. This is the first wash on the cat, so I haven't go that dark yet. I want to finish the cat and the hoodie around the same time. So later on, you're going to see that I am starting to connect some of the shapes. Adding a little bit of the gray fur. Now painting the pinkish color for the ear. And that's the first wash for the cat. And now I started to mix a darker value for the hoodie. And starting to give the hoodie some structure and lighting and form. Now there are quite a bit of wrinkles and folds for the hoodie. But it's not necessary that I try to copy everything that I see. Just trying to paint the essence of it. So in order to show that form, you usually want to have a hard edge and a soft edge. The soft edge is showing the form is turning. The light is fading from light to dark. That's why you see that soft transition. That's why you give it a soft edge. Now the hard edge is when the wrinkle and fold, they overlap. So with that very simple visual language, you can see the layering of the clothes, the wrinkle and fold, as well as the structure. So now I'm painting her right arm. So give it some dark underneath there. Connect that to the bottom of the painting. In the photo, she actually have her left hand underneath. But I don't feel like it's really necessary that I paint that in, so I just kind of skip that. Now, very importantly, I connected the dark shape on the hoodie into the cat. So I actually want a little bit of connection between her hoodie and the cat so that it feels like they are touching each other, which physically they are. It's always a good idea trying to connect as much shape as possible. You really don't need to separate everything that you see. Just because you know they are two different things doesn't mean you need to paint separately. Connecting the shape and suggest shape actually make the painting look more interesting in my opinion. And now I'm starting to connect the fur to her eyes. Now painting the nose little suggestion of her mouth. And here we already start to see the basic shape of the cat. And we don't need a lot. We see the ear, the nose, the eye, and we can make out a cat already. So now I start to paint the darker value on the cat, mostly just focusing on the eye. And now the eye is really popping out and you can really feel the cat is looking at the camera, is looking at the viewer. So I pre-wet the edge of cast fur and I start to paint on top of it so that it creates a soft edge. And that creates the furry looking effect. She looks nice and soft. So I'm continue to work on the hoodie. Try to give it another layer for the hair and connect that to the dark part of her hoodie. So the cat, the white fur of the cat against the darker hoodie really makes the cat pops out and really give you that sense of lighting. So this painting is at a good place and I started to paint some background. I don't want the background to be completely white. That looks really empty. By painting some background, you create some sense of space. Do a little bit of wet onto wet, suggesting something is going on in the background. And the background on the right side will make it cooler. It will make it much lighter. And here is the finished painting.
And I want to take a little bit of my time here to appreciate my wife as a full-time mom and a housewife. I feel like the society that we're living in right now, at least that's what I feel, we don't really appreciate full-time mom and housewife anymore. Everybody is very career-driven. And there's nothing wrong with that. I do believe if you have a passion to pursue, if you want to build a career, everybody is free to do so. But my wife told me that since she was high school, she shared her future goal is to be a full-time mom, is to be a housewife. And her friend during that time looked at her weird and sort of looking down on her unintentionally, of course. They didn't mean to do that. Fast forward to the recent years, especially these two years, my wife often talked to me and wondering if she should get a job, she should have a career, because she felt like that's what everybody is doing. And I told her that if that's what makes you happy, you should do whatever you want and I will try to support you. But if you really enjoy being a full-time mom and a housewife, I am not going to be here and telling you that you should get a career because our livelihood is okay. You don't have to go out to work for money, fortunately. I think the society we live in, we don't celebrate full-time mom and housewife as much anymore. A lot of time when I'm looking at places like LinkedIn or Facebook, I see a lot of strong women. I see a lot of independent women and they are very successful in their career. And I think that's amazing. I think that's great. But my wife, despite she being probably more intelligent than me and very, very capable, she chose to be a full-time mom because she enjoy raising the kids. She enjoy being at home. And I think that should be celebrated too because full-time mom is very, very tough job and they don't get appreciated enough in our society, I feel, at least less than me as a working person. I get compensated, I have salary, I have benefit, and if I do a good job, I have bonus. My wife doesn't get any of that. Despite her job is often tougher than mine, she constantly feeling that she is not achieving much. And that makes me very sad because she is the heart of our family and she is so important as a housewife, as a full-time mom. And of course, I don't think our society owes her some appreciation or celebration. So at least for me, I have a little platform here. I want to take this chance to really just tell my wife that thank you for everything you've done for our family for me and for our kids. This family won't have a heart without you. Kids won't feel secure without you. My life will be a mess without you. We are lucky to have you. You give us warmth and comfort. If you are a mom who's watching this video right now, happy Mother's Day. Now it doesn't matter if you're a full-time mom or your mom was a career, you are great. Thank you for everything that you've done. The world is a better place because of mothers. This is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are. I will see you next time.